Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area for the IWC, the RWA, and IndieWrestling.us. With me as usual is Eamon Payton. He's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling coming to us from Dallas, Texas. Hello, Sorgatron. I'm so excited to talk about Indie Wrestling with you. Yes, yes. It feels like it's been forever. But uh, <laughs> anyways, it is. Uh, you can check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, where you can subscribe to this show and others on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and, of course, video versions on the Facebook and the YouTube page for Rustling Mayhem Show. Drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And be sure to stay tuned. Uh, Live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We do uh, a lot of recording on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You become a part of that. Or you can also keep an eye out. We do events whenever we do schedule an interview. We've been having live interviews, like, you know, just like we have in the past few weeks with Kevin Thorne, Britt Baker. You guys could join that live and contribute to those uh, while they're happening if they're at a time that is suitable for you. Or catch the raw. Sometimes there's stuff that doesn't make it in the conversation, like Britt Baker getting a picture with uh, Roman Reigns over here. This guy. We got the video uh, and so much more. So, with that, without further ado, let's get to the interview. On the line with us right now is somebody I had the pleasure of meeting just a few weeks ago, that ill fated night that I got yelled at by Justin Labar in his own studio. Uh, he is the Rev, and he is a man of many talents, and he's joining me. One of them now is, is Google Hangout, is one of those talents, as we got our technologies figured out. He's all set to go. And of course, everything looks great because he's a man of the television. The Rev Ron Hunt, how you doing? Hey man, I'm feeling like I'm legit the face that runs the place, brother. How you doing, man? <laughs> All right, man. So uh, we're getting into the myriad of things around wrestling and beyond that that that, that you're involved with. And I, I discovered a few just when we we're chatting here tonight, of course. Uh, but first, we like to get to know the people a little bit. Uh, for those that don't know you in the area or uh, in the many many things that you pop up on. Um, how did you kind of get introduced to pro wrestling, or what's your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Uh, I would I would honestly say that this this is a question that a lot of people ask me. Clearly, you know, and you're getting into professional wrestling. It's not, hey, I feel like I want to get slammed on 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 steel and wood for the rest of my life. I mean, there has to be some some bit of craziness, insaneness in your brain um, in order for you to go into business. But honestly, I would say that. Going all the way back, I want to say maybe like 1995-ish, 1995-ish or so. But uh, I always tell people, one of my main uh, people that drew me to wrestling was definitely Eddie Guerrero. Uh, and then also you look at the whole Samoan lineage. Shout out to all for the wild Samoan Sika and all, all the whole Samoan lineage over there. But um, definitely Eddie Guerrero and the Samoans were those that, that, that kind of let me see that, hey, listen, you can snap and be a whole nother person. And uh, thankfully, just by studying those guys and having the ability to even train uh, with a couple of them, actually let me snap over to the other side. And, uh, well, I guess this, this is the rep that you're dealing with right now. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so, I mean, you know, getting into training and everything, well, how, how did you discover it, you know, uh, that, that you could move into just from watching to being actually in the ring? Well, you know, the funny, th the funny thing was I was actually still in high school. I was transitioning. I think it was like 16, 17-ish. And uh, right before college, I did football, basketball, baseball. You you name the sport, I did it. Everything but golf because, you know, to me, I'd rather body slam and hurt people. So that's why I quit baseball and basketball first, stuck with football. That wasn't enough pain, so Rev got into professional wrestling. But uh, that transition happening, uh, I want to say right before graduation, I told my parents, listen, I want to be a professional wrestler. They said, you got to get that. You got to get those books. You know, I planned on going to college anyway. So the deal was, all right, you can get trained as long as you finish your college education. Uh, I got some family down in Florida, relocate down in Florida for about six months or so between that transition. Got trained at the Wild Samoan Pro Wrestling Training Academy down there and uh, came back to Pittsburgh, went to college, and then started wrestling pretty much full time outside of my normal nine to five. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and if don't mind mentioning, you, you, you are in the television industry already in your nine to five as well. Man, it's a it's a crazy crazy life. Actually, one of one of your friends, I believe Matt Carlin's, I work with as well. He'll tell you the thing is this: you know, work is unpredictable, especially working in TV news. You don't know what time you might have to get called and when it has to happen. But the thing is, 
it teaches you how much you love the business. I can't tell you, man, how many times I, I, I was at work four o'clock in the morning. I get off about two and I'm doing about an hour drive to go train until about nine o'clock at night, go back home and get about two hours of sleep and go ahead and do it again. It's mainly because you love the business. But yeah, man, outside of wrestling and everything like that, I'm the guy that's pushing buttons behind a computer <laughs> and writing some words for people to say. That's awesome. Uh, do you find, uh, you know, having that experience in television, and of course pro wrestling is a very television-centric thing. I got, you know, as we're going, I actually have SmackDown on over here uh, is where, you know, most people want to go. Like, does that kind of help you, like, in your perception of what you want to kind of uh, uh, do in the ring and, and kind of promote? I mean, it de- it definitely helps out. I can't tell you how many times, and it's it's funny because I get caught up talking with wrestling. Everyone in the you know everyone in the news world knows I'm a professional wrestler. So uh, a lot of times, actually, when I'm writing stories, I'm talking wrestling, and you never know, I might have to say late breaking news, Brock Lesnar, and I got a backspace, 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 push the F five. But um, the the thing is, it definitely helped me line up, you know, focus a little bit, especially with being a producer. Um, you know, as we know, whether you're in wrestling or in you know the news or anything like that, being a producer, you have to know what your focuses are, Mm -hmm. what your goals are, and what story you're trying to get across to thousands, perhaps millions of people. And with me, it made that even even more of a transition going into the wrestling world. When I get into that ring, I'm a producer of my own storyline, man. So the thing is, I go in there, which I want to relate to them, and I got to make sure that I get that across in my time. Awesome. Let's talk about a little bit of that in the ring. Uh, I got up here for uh, everybody on video. There's going to be a little bit of uh, your uh, wonderful demo reel that was going around oh, here a little bit ago. I was I'm watching this like, man, there's a lot of slow mo to start this thing off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, I think, I think you got the music with me circling around about a few times. I think there I go <laughs> hitting the ring and everything, get a couple entrances in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think you see me circling with. Uh, I want to say uh, MV Young, actually right there is VOW, but MV Young, uh, a great a great guy in the Pittsburgh area and, and expanding. He was over in the UK wrestling mm-hmm. and uh, a few other people. And then that music hits, that bass hits, and, you know, we go <laughs> at it. <laughs> That's Can't great. You found out, though. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, well, tell me a little bit about, like, you know, The Rev. What is your uh, kind of in-ring persona? Is it is it just you turned up? Uh, you know, what, what's your angle on this? I mean, I mean, if, if for anyone who doesn't know about me, uh, I am I am a licensed minister. I've been a licensed minister for about five years, and uh, a lot of times they tell you in order to be successful in the business, you have to learn how to just be yourself, except mm-hmm. turning up to a million. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. And uh, right now, fans aren't too happy with me because not too long ago I turned on my tag team partner Sean Phoenix, and um, actually he lost the tag belt, but you know. We still got it. My order, my congregation, my pulpit, we still got the title. So the, the thing is now, listen, man, I'm out to save souls. I'm out to, to tell these fans what real wrestling is like. And the simple thing is that that's beating up people and getting the victory at no matter what cause. If you have to cheat, so be it. But the fact is you always have to win. So that's the thing, man. I'm just trying to get it over. I'm the savior of professional wrestling. I'm going to do this until each fan actually knows the true flavor of it. And uh, if you don't learn, I guess you got to face the book of revelations, man. Nice. Nice. Um, so you're also involved in uh, going down your laundry list now on your Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as I mentioned, we, we met each other over at uh, uh, the chair shot reality and see your yeah. contributor to wrestle zone as well. Um, is that just a, another thing that feeds you into the business here? I mean, I mean, it's kind of the perfect pairing with chair shot uh, being uh, 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 pretty much a TV production for the internet and your background. Man, it is the perfect, perfect blend. I tell you one thing. Actually, when I was in college, a uh, a friend of mine that was head of our news station over in Greenville, Pennsylvania, we were, we were talking, and he knew I was early in wrestling. I think then I was about a minute in, and he said uh, I was about a year in, and he was like, "Hey, I got a friend this into it. You know, he works with WrestleZone. He does this." I'm like, "What is what's his name?" He's like, "Oh, it's Justin Labar." So <laughs> you know, so the next thing there, you know, I did my homework a little bit. Definitely knew of him. Everything got in contact with him, and now I can consider him a great friend, Josh Eisenberg. Uh, we had Brian Goulish, he's in, uh, everyone behind our scenes. But with me, it honestly, it can't get any better now. I mean, how many of us can say we get paid to technically go on TV and talk about what we love to do? 
Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's that's exactly the life I'm living, man. So right after I'm done with work, I go back over. Hey, you put the face that actually runs the place that has the grace. You put it on TV with a man that's eh, not so beautiful. Sorry, Justin, but you get it. You get it. We get on TV. We have some fun. We agree. We disagree. Like last episode, he might get uh, a no chin music. And, uh, and, you know, we go about it that way. But honestly, Cheer Shot Reality is the perfect blend. Uh, I'm, I'm in heaven every time we record, man. That's amazing. Uh, so uh, uh, moving on here. Uh, so and I saw you're also into ghost hunting. It, it seems like I don't know how many wrestlers I know are into ghost hunting. <laughs> Like this is like a common thing. It, it 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 seems. There there's there's actually a few of us. The more and more I begin to talk to people, the more they're like, "Whoa, wait a second, You know, like you're in this too. And the next thing you know, you got a whole another click, almost like Bone Street Crew and them that, that just runs around and, and just does their thing. Um, but but yeah, that was that was one thing that I I wouldn't quite say is 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 on the entertaining side of me. I had a couple things happen like earlier in my life. That, that kind of set it up that way. And in, in a weird way, it never left me, you know, kind of like that third eye, that third sense. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot of questions that people have is, is how do you, you know, how do you kind of mix that and everything? And uh, honestly, I, I feel like it definitely helped my ministry a lot. Um, you know, rather I'm, you know, in the pulpit, literally in the pulpit, or rather I'm in the ring or behind the scenes talking to people that I got, I got to deal with people's spirits. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't think we're walking zombies, but you got to deal. You got to deal with people, mm-hmm. and uh, unfortunately, sometimes spirits deal with other people, and then they call the rev like I'm Ghostbusters, and uh, I got to take care of it somehow, some way. And I, I'm trying to tell you, if you ever try to headlock a ghost, it doesn't work, brother. <laughs> it, awesome. it doesn't. I tried so many times. It, I haven't mastered it. If you know how to master it, let me know, man. Mm-hmm. Um. So so uh, from there. Uh, you, you say you got you got go, a lot going on. You're in chair shot. You're we're doing wrestle zone and all that stuff. Um, what are you watching? Obviously, you're watching the main programs for chair shot. But what's kind of catching your attention these days? Um, honestly, I'm tuning more and more into the independent scene, man. I think a lot of guys are left underrated. Um, I mean, e- easily we can go to WWE Network. We can go to WWE.com and catch up on what we're missing. But the fact is, listen, I'm in it. You're in it, man. We know it. Independent wrestling is the future. You're not going to pick them from anywhere else but mm-hmm. independent wrestling. So I've been trying to keep up on, you know, keep up on a lot, especially our competition. See how PWX and other companies I work for can beat other uh, can beat other competitions. Um, but, you know, definitely watching MCW. Um, we go down New Japan and still still keep up with it. But a lot of companies, MCW. Uh, local companies, we got RWA, VOW. I knew a couple guys that's down there. And uh, not even if it's a company, but independent-wise, I definitely got a few people that's in eyesight that I do have not in the list of Jericho, but in the book of Rev that I'm looking to meet in the ring toe-to-toe with in this next year, 2017. Awesome. Uh, so what is I, – I could go, I go, go a few here, ways here. First of all, I want to know what's the best and worst about working in TV news. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm, wait, I'm waiting for things I haven't heard from Carlin's. Oh man, <laughs> I, I don't know. You might, you might have heard a lot from him. I say, I say the worst. Uh, well, I definitely say the worst is waking up. I mean, you know, it, to me, it's easier waking up a little bit early and doing a road trip, you know, to to wrestle and everything like that, rather than waking up and sitting behind a keyboard. Um, but the worst I would definitely say is, is just a bunch of the chaos that you hear on the news, man. Uh, all the, all the craziness and the, and the, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but you'll be surprised. I, the best way I can explain is this. If you watch any news and you get, you go crazy by what you hear on a daily basis coming across your television, imagine what we don't even have time to display on your TV, <laughs> you know? So we, we deal with it all. Um, but, but I, I definitely say the, the best thing is when it's free coffee and free donut day, man, <laughs> free coffee and free donut day. You can't beat it, man. Rev, Rev's a coffee guy, man. I'll go back to my normal question. Now, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? <laughs> All right. You know, no more question. Uh, the, the, the best thing is, man, just motivating, man, captivating, uh, being a master of your craft. Not often can you get someone that says, 
hey, you know, I'm an artist. Here's my paintbrush. And this canvas is, you know, is, is legit my canvas. This ring is my canvas. And the, I think the best thing is, is you can motivate people. You can tell your story. You can get on people's nerves if that's your case. If like, that's my case. I can really care less about getting on people's nerves. I love it. The more they boo me, the more I say, good for you. You know, I might throw you a little tithe or something. But but the, the thing is, I think the best thing is just to being able to allow fans to get into that magic, man. Not, a lot of times we go through a lot of craziness. And I do feel like, you know, producing news has helped this. I see so much craziness that goes on in this world Monday through Friday. The least I can do is allow people like you and I to snap back and get back into their kid like mentality, at least for Friday, Saturday and Sunday, just to give them that, you know, just to give them almost like that is to get over. Uh, but I definitely say the the worst thing. Uh, so you're going to make me sound like a face here. I'm, I'm trying not to say that there isn't a worst thing, but I would definitely say the worst thing is just the, the beating up and the tolls that it take on your body, man. The, the tolls, man. It, it is it is a brutal. I don't care what anyone says. They say it's fake, just like Finley. I tell them to get in the ring, or you know, I try to break their finger, you know. But the the thing is, you you know it. We know we get. A matter of fact, if we can get Lavar on here right now. We can ask him. You know, how did those stick shots feel? But, <laughs> but the, the thing is, it takes such a toll on your body, man. So really, if you ask me, I get no rest because I I, I realize the hard way. If I go to sleep, if I lay off, if I take even two weeks off, my body is worse and I can't get back into the swings of things. So when I'm off, I hit the gym. When I'm not hitting the gym, I'm going to the spa. If I'm not doing a spa, believe it or not, the Rev does yoga. And if you actually look at my Twitter, I just I just tweeted DDP about two days ago and I'm getting his yoga plan. I'm getting on DDP yoga. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Hey, Foley just got on it, right? We'll see what that Listen, does for him. I heard everything but negative on it. So, you know, if it's all well with the fans, it's all well in my book. Yep. Awesome. It, it, is, it is interesting. You you are you, know, you deal with TV news all week. You deal with the wrestling on the weekend. It, it's just like two different sides of the spectrum. And it's really awesome that you're, you're finding kind of your center between the two of those. That's real cool. So, uh, where? Well, first of all, you've had this belt over your, your shoulder uh, the entire time. I've not addressed it. So, let's give a shout out. What 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 you got over there? Listen, my man, listen, my man, you are looking at right now the three time, not once, not twice, but the three time PWX Pro Wrestling Express Tag Team Champion. Myself, my man, Christian Black, another man of our whole brotherhood, the order, we are taking over all of Pittsburgh. I want to say if you ask Christian Black, he will tell you, we are the best. We put it up against anyone. We are the best tag team in Pittsburgh, if not the whole wide world. And you can preach that. <laughs> Didn't that wait, are you the one that I'm, I, I was told the story about how you had become like a, a multi-time champion by not actually losing the title in a match? <laughs> was, that you, was that you I was I'm, being told about? <laughs> Uh, well, well, if we if we want to go back in memory lane, uh, sometimes we know we don't get along with our tag partners. I mean that that's the thing. Uh, we won the titles, uh, six man tag, three man tag, six man tag. Um, it was me and Sean Phoenix. We were tagged for the first time, and uh, I don't know where we we got the victory. I mean, I, I give it to him. I give it to him. We got the victory. But uh, through through that time, I seen some things that the Rev was not liking, and. Uh, Let's just say I had to take matters into my own hands, DDT'd him on a steel chair, and uh, switched over to the other side. So technically, I'm a two-time champ without ever losing the belt. (laughs) Paul Phoenix was just a loser, and he lost the belt, but the ref still walked away with the title. And technically, if you ask AJ Styles or anyone else, I believe they will tell you that's the only thing that counts. Mm -hmm. Who has the gold versus who doesn't? And uh, I've been keeping this pretty for a while, man. I've been keeping it mighty pretty. That's uh, uh, that's. I love when uh, when pro wrestling math works out. Listen, man, <laughs> you don't always get it. I tell people you've never seen anything like it in WWE. You never seen anything like it in ECW and WCW. Why? Because I am a genius. I am a mastermind. I got trained by one of the greatest, and somehow people underestimate me and think that the Rev can never think 
five steps ahead <laughs> of their opponent and maybe perhaps their so-called partner. But the fact is, the crowd watched me do it. His mother watched me do it. Everyone backstage watched me do it. And uh, honestly, I'm proud to be on this show, but I believe even you are watching me do it, man. We're going to make history. Awesome. Where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at Hunt 7 or just look up The Rev Ron Hunt. Find me on Facebook, The Rev Ron Hunt, and on Instagram, Rev underscore Ron Hunt. You can look me up all there. Give me some shout outs. And actually, I got a new T-shirt coming out uh, before the anniversary show on November the 19th. Pro Wrestling Express is having their 22nd anniversary show. We have Mark Madden coming. We have a guy from the Misfits coming. We have, um, uh, uh, who do we have? Who do we have? Who do we have? We got a guy from the Tully Blanchard. We got one of the guys from the Four Horsemen coming. And uh, we're looking for a great time, but I will be dropping my other T-shirt line, The Rev has Spoken, right then at the PWX show. And if a, guy, if a couple people start following me, you never know. I already gave away four free T-shirts. I might give away some more. There you go. Go check them out. And let's get back and talk to uh, Eamon about what he checked out recently in wrestling. Eamon, uh, you got to attend some indie wrestling. I, I, wait, was it participate? Were you on the job this weekend? I was on the job not for the company, but for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, what what did you get into? Uh, it was the uh, inaugural uh, Wrestle Circus event, uh, uh, which was very much a, a, a star-studded event. Uh, uh, I, uh, first, I want to thank uh, uh, the, uh, the promoter there and, and the whole crew there for allowing uh, both myself and uh, Justin Bissonette, the co-owner for Inspire Pro Wrestling, to be there and, and, and event. Uh, but they had their first ever event, uh, 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 inaugural event, and it was very star-studded, uh, to say the least. I would say a good, probably more than half of the, the talents were uh, uh, non-local uh, talents uh, uh, and, and big-level like independent names uh, like your uh, like your Cole Cabanas. Um, uh, uh, God, there's so many. I'm, like, no, I'm blanking. I, I'm like, I, I, got the, I, I have the poster in front of me right now. It's uh, I got Cole Cabana, I got D.H. Smith, Ethan Carter, Ray Rowe, uh, 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 DJ Z, um, and there's like three other guys I don't know. And this is just the first two matches on the poster. Uh, nice, Guevara against each other, Adam Page, uh, Willie Mack. Jeez, I, and I'm only halfway of, down of, the poster. A lot of names. Leva uh, Bates. Um, hold on, let me, let me see if I can get down. Uh, Keith Lee, part of this. Donovan Dijak. Jeez, this! How, yeah. First of all, how many matches, and then how many freaking crazy names on here? Jessica James, of uh, course, a local for you. Laredo Kid, jeez, this is insane. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the top independent talents definitely uh, kind of emerged that card, which is very cool. Um, uh, I don't think Texas has really had a promotion like, like we've brought in independent names before for, for wrestling, uh, uh, of course, but um, Texas, I don't think, has really had a promotion that is kind of bringing in that many talents like that and, and putting on a show such as that, um, uh, which, which is cool. And, and, and I, which is something I like is that it's different. It's different than, you know, what we're doing at Inspire Pro, what, uh, you know, other companies around the area are doing, which I think just really only helps the area and really helps cultivate it, uh, which is really cool. And then, like I said, they were uh, very uh, hospitable, uh, they allowed us to paper uh, the their show for uh, our next event, which is which is very cool. Um, and and yeah, the, it was a really fun show. Talked about them flowed really well. Uh, I was surprised with like ten matches, but also like as you saw, like ten matches that are like all like top level matches. So it you know those are matches that for the most part I could see going like twenty minutes each. Like, but they, but everything flowed really well and and and, and kept a really good pace, which was nice. Um, yeah, and for a first show, I thought they did really well. Um, uh, it's, it's, I, uh, got to talk to the owner a bit, uh, and this is his first time ever running a wrestling promotion. So, uh, I think there'll, there'll definitely be, you know, challenges and, and stuff like that, you know, that both you and I have seen from working in wrestling and stuff like that, just from a, from a different job point of view, not even like owning a wrestling company. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see what they do going forward. They're also not just sticking in one area. It seems like they're going across Texas, which is cool. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they develop. And this is, you know, uh, we were, 
I think I showed some some other people at, at some of the other shows this poster, and we were talking about it a little bit. And and it, 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 you looked at this, and I was like, "This is an obscenely big card." Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, "How are they even doing this?" You know, understanding a little bit, we do have the logistics and everything like that. But but yeah, you know, yeah. kind of from your your description, like, uh, and, and after seeing House of Hardcore, we talked about House, House of Hardcore at a pretty good length um, on 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 Wrestling Mayhem show this week, actually. Uh, since a lot of guys, you know, I, I took part in that. A lot of big names on that as well. Uh, so, so, so go check out that discussion on on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, five forty two. If I have my numbers right, yes. But, but this feels like they're trying to pull off that thing. They're saying we want to have a star studded affair that brings people in and and make sure there is a top quality show and and and, and hopefully everything kind of evens out. Like, what did they have like a higher ticket fee or anything like that to kind De- of definitely a bit higher than what we do at inspire uh, right. not, not and not extra extraneously high but um right. and, and they pack they pack the place which is really cool to see um uh this is definitely something that I, I i hope they can maintain definitely uh just like you mentioned from like our point of view of like being around wrestling promotions like this is something inspired by wrestling could never do um uh we just, to be to be straight we don't have the money for that <laughs> to bring in that level of talent, uh, I, I, you know, that level of outside talent, I should say, um, you know, because I, I there, there's a lot of great local guys as well, but you know, if we bring in a, in a name, usually it's like one or two people, you know, like the Battle War show that we're doing coming up, it's like a rarity for us because that's about like six or seven people that we're bringing in from, you know, a different part of the country. So, right. um, it gets pricey. Uh, and, I'm sorry. It gets pricey. Yeah, and and hopefully, I think they they'll you know have a good business plan going forward and stuff like that. Um, but it definitely seems like they want to focus on bringing in those names, which, like I said, is something that not everyone in Texas is doing, which is what makes it work. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think has it has the potential to work. I think you you know, and even though it's a it's a you know around the same area, it's not. You know, we, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, my boss at Inspire put it very, very well on Twitter. It's not about co-promoting, it's about cooperation. And, and, uh, I, I think it's very cool to have a promotion like that that is different from what we're doing because it just really invigorates both products, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I, I think, I think it'll be interesting to see how they grow and, and I hope they, I hope they progress and I hope they make Austin a hotbed, you know. It is interesting to see these kinds of things. Uh, another one I know we get in this area, and of course, uh, Northeast Wrestling, which I, I got to work a couple of years ago. Uh, and, uh, they have big baseball stadium shows, you know, that look like they're better attended than like what TNA has tried to do in the past, right? And then yeah. there's also uh, one that comes through Altoona line. They're actually coming again on the 18th of November. Is big time wrestling? I think we talked about this on the show. They're actually having Sting there. Right, or have guys mm-hmm. like the Hardy Boys. I mean, this is this is these are these are you know it, it, it's not these these promoters that we love and work for or, or or attend or anything. They're doing things on a shoestring budget and and doing what they can with the what they have, which is very little in most cases, right? Yeah. Um, this is these are well funded. They're able to put the money up front to get lots of names to make sure and 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 properly promote. By the way, too, I would say. Right, yeah, uh, totally. do the right thing versus other shows that I've seen come into Pittsburgh and and not do any promotion and not do any better than an average, below average indie show with top names on the card. You know, right. there there there's parts of the puzzle that that need to come together, and and and, and good business people have to be behind it for something like this. You know, and I think that's what these big time wrestling with Wrestle Circus, House of Hardcore. Obviously, somebody that's been in the business with Tommy Dreamer, you know, uh, yeah. and, and, and Wrestle Circus. I, I was really curious to see how Wrestle Circus turned out. If it was going to be a big time wrestling situation, or if it was going to be, oh man, I hope everybody gets paid situation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's good to see that there is another one of these. It, it's it's this interesting um, intersection where it's bigger independent wrestling, right? Yeah. So and you can see that uh, IWC does does their big show of the year with the superstars right but, yeah, yeah, yeah but again that's a different situation that show operates differently than a typical iwc show does right 
Um, <laughs> you know, logistics of business for the wrestling business that I don't even understand, but I know that that is treated differently on the back end. So, um, and it's for charity too. So, so I think there's other things that, that are involved there as well. So, oh. good to hear. So, Wrestle Circus, where can people check them out? Uh, I believe it's WrestleCircus.com is their website. Uh, they're on Wrestle Circus on uh, all social media. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're, you know, a company to look out for, definitely. Now, are these guys going to disappoint me in that they had no circus themed things at the show? Uh, none, no, sir. Th- their champions are the Ringmaster Champion, which is their heavyweight champion, their Sideshow Champion, which is like their, I guess, intercontinental champion, I guess you could say. Um, th- there was no, re- yeah, there was definitely no direct circus theme, I guess you could say. But uh, even so, I mean, I thought the, the, the event came off well. They, they packed the building. Uh, it was a cool venue, the uh, Ironwood Hall. Um, it, it, it was a nice place to have a wrestling show. Awesome. Awesome. Go check them out. Good to hear. Good to hear, man. And of course, you got Battle Wars coming up with the Inspire Pro Wrestling. Yes, and Chicago Pro Wrestling. Uh, we got a good group of guys from Chicago Pro coming down uh, to work for us uh, 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 on that night. So, Saturday, October 29th. It's the rare time we're doing a Saturday show. Uh, normally, we do Sundays uh, uh, because that's kind of the time. The, most shows in Austin run on Sundays. Um, uh, because of some of the nightlife stuff and it's also just logistically kind of easier. So this is one of the rare occasions where we're doing a Saturday show. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how it goes uh, and if we will ever do more because um, it's something people have wanted. Bef- Sometimes we get like people who live in like Houston or Dallas being like, I love you guys' stuff, but I would love to come down more. Why don't you guys do Saturday shows? So if you're one of those people who said that, you have no excuse um, to not come down. So um, definitely go check us out. At, uh, uh, it, it will be in the Red Oak Ballroom in Austin, Texas. And for more information and tickets, you can visit inspireprowrestling.com. Awesome. Uh, beyond that, uh, on my side, just finished the ed- main edit for RWA's Bloody Harvest. So that's going to be uh, pushed out here uh, sometime this week. Uh, as well as some other RWA content, I believe, as well. Uh, also, our friends... Uh, Premier Championship Wrestling, a new promotion out of Cleveland. Our friend Joe Dabrowski is involved. Uh, we actually had those up on IndieWrestling.us for five bucks a piece. Um, nice. They're they're you know fairly not you know not a lot of bells and whistles to the shows apparently, uh, but they have Johnny Gargano. They have uh, uh, Matt Cross on those shows. Dylan Bostic and a lot of the faces we know up here in Pittsburgh around um, um, you know IWC and. And 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 uh, uh, groups around here, VOW, uh, things like that. So so some new stuff in Cleveland, and uh, just just kind of a new promotion, kind of getting off the ground there, uh, with a great start, with with a lot of uh, great minds and great uh, great names kind of attached to it. So Premier Championship Wrestling, that's over there, five but four ninety nine, I think, for the digital download. So, and uh, what else is going on? Oh, hey, this weekend we are scheduled to join Code Red Wrestling, our good friends over there. Uh, operating out of Century 3 Mall. Uh, we will be uh, 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 aiming to do... We're experimenting. Um, Chachi's going to be joining me, and we're going to be doing a Wrestling Mayhem show live down there. Uh, so we're yes. going to uh, be there doing the podcast, greeting people as they come in, uh, interviewing some of the wrestlers there about what's going on. And that's a, uh, That event is actually for charity. It, uh, the proceeds go to St. Jude's uh, Children's Research Hospital, uh, so come down. It's for a good cause. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, come down south for that. We are also scheduled to join Renegade Wrestling Alliance November 12th for doing the same thing. Uh, we'll be uh, joining them again, doing trying to do a live show. And we're just kind of see how the concept works at this point. We don't know. One, we don't know what's going to turn out. This might be something you find in Indie Mayhem show feed as a special. Might be something that we put somewhere else. Um, so, so please uh, kind of stay tuned for that. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll have more information for you. Well, we'll def- certainly after this week, after we've, 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 we've gotten one in the can. So looking forward to that. Hey, man, we just need you to do a, uh, a uh, Texas version of this. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that will go well on my end. Uh, I, I, we'll, do, we'll do that once you come down to Texas and come to a show with me and bring all your oh, I keep saying every time I see the ad, it's like I need to go watch the Royal Rumble with Eamon. So, oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. There'll, there'll be a lot of uh, indie related stuff. I'm assuming that weekend. So. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm hoping, 
hope the big money client comes in by the end of the year and I can get my ticket and get down there. So, right. or if any client wants to send me down around the end of November, uh, January, I would really appreciate that to the to the <laughs> to the uh, San Antonio area. So, anyways, Eamon Peyton and Eamon Two, please. I'm at Sorgatron. Thank you so much for joining us, and so much to our guests. So, and remember, in the week that follows, to support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.